good morning yeah much better than uh yesterday yesterday it was big bad because what really happened is that uh, after we we met day before yesterday there was so much of pain in the throat that i was unable to speak and uh, and uh, yes then then there was severe irritation and then there was some blood so at that point i thought that let me take some rest so today quite better and uh, we start with a very interesting topic joints right we'll be taking it into two parts the reason is say what happens that during uh, in in any of the book the classification it goes to that level it become it they make it so complex that at times it is okay when you are reading that's fine but it is difficult to remember so we'll be breaking it into two parts and uh, we'll not try to cram but we'll try to understand that every joint how it is important and at, at today many a times i would say that okay you bend your knee and try to move your toes and then you see that how it rotates right so that's how we'll be going from time to time for today right okay so let's start so that's why part 1 and part 2 right so for the joints right pretty easy right joint so obviously when the two bones meet and that's how they form a joint but say will be coming across many clinical conditions also and those clinical conditions they are they'll be based on either the greek or the latin correct greek or latin so in greek language this joint is called as arthron right it is called as arthron and it is this arthro which will keep on using at may various places however in latin the same joint it is also called as the articulatio right so from that we you will be will be using articulations right or the junctura right junctura important is that all these words they'll be utilizing extensively when we'll be talking about the clinical conditions right normally say during our normal discussion our in our today's discussion so we'll be talking straight away <coughs> to the i am much better much better right i so uh, today to in our discussion these joints still be these these names will be playing bit less role right one very interesting word which you must know and it is it is quite interesting and that, that is called as the syndesmology right syndesmology so it is syndesmology and i'm keeping a space between syndesmo and logi logi means always it is the science right so it is the science but syndesmo means whenever we'll be talking about joints right and not only the joints joints plus ligaments because they will be playing a crucial role now when i'll be using the word collateral ligament right collateral so that means that this is the joint those ligaments they are supporting from the sides right they are the collateral ligaments medial collateral lateral collateral then there will be few ligaments which will be inside the joint there will be few ligaments which will be outside the joint but their function will remain same another thing when we'll be discussing joints you have to remember that axis is very important in which axis movements are occurring now axis is how say this is x axis right this is y axis so this so far though it is easy but then the axis which is which is coming out from me and going going towards you right so that is that is how we we draw it like this right so this is the z axis or the z axis so that's how in 3d everything will rotate well things are pretty simple because in medical science no one can can accuse us for cheating right because we can always say okay this is my elbow joint now they can't say that keep your elbow outside the 
exam room right you can always palpate and then you can feel ki, okay it is this joint and then you write so that's how we'll try to remember okay joints means it's not so that there is always a movement right? joint means it's not so that always a movement so some joints they will be movable some joints they will be immovable but still they are important right so we'll be studying this thing in more detail movable and in immovable joints then obviously that when we talk about that these immovable joints say for example the best best joint right that is in our skull right those those joints and which were forming what was called as the fontanelli right you remember that fontanelli right because the skull of the baby is not fully packed right from the beginning right in between there these are these are the spaces right anterior fontanelli posterior fontanelli and then then it allows the skull to grow at certain age it fuses because the now the brain will not be yes now the brain will not be increasing in its size right pus so that's how it works eventually i just read i was reading in one of the book don't want to take the name but when it is said right it is a yeah, membrane field this i am telling you bit specifically in writing it in red color when it is said that anterior fontanelli that what is the purpose it can be palpated to to figure out the hydration of the baby never ever do that right never ever do that when it is said that anterior fontanelli right it is over here you palpate and you figure out that if there is improper hydration so then it would be suppressed was because this is like such a thin layer and and no one has got right to play with the brain right should never be touched right never be pressed and palpated no there are many good good methods to figure out the hydration right so anterior fontanelli or none of the fontanelli should ever be palpated never palpate never palpate don't even touch right because over here chances are very high that you your hand is having that silk smooth say sensitivity but not everyone right so if anyone touches right with with some pressure you don't know what you are damaging right so this is the universal rule right never to be palpated any of the fontanelli right just the thing <coughs> okay so now we start with our today's uh palpable means palpable means say inspection right palpation percussion auscultation you remember these four words inspection means just watch palpation means you you touch percussion means you knock and auscultation is when you use your stethoscope and you try to listen inspection palpation percussion auscultation touch yeah for the examination right got it fine so here is the classification right here is the classification now for yeah very right very right in adult no problem you can even even hit right no problem because then the skull becomes very strong so in adult no worries means it means it's like so don't attempt right hitting everyone but uh, well in adult skull is pretty strong then the only soft area right can anyone say that out of the entire skull which is the most soft most dangerous area if there is any hit over there it can lead to some very dangerous results anyone right what is the name of that area which is most delicate in the entire skull giving you a hint h shaped four sutures no occipital region is superb it is very strong medulla yes that's right richa you are right medulla oblongata to that is part of the brain right that is part of the brain no 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 so uh, yeah carrion is the correct answer that's right carrion is the correct answer right because see medulla medulla is part of the brain question is in the skull in the skull 
the lateral side, right? Lateral side. When when you'll be reading surgery in Love and Bailey, right? That is the book of uh, surgery. It is this much thick. And name of the book is very interesting. Name of the book is Short Practice of Surgery, right? So we used to wonder if this much is short practice, then what is called as the long practice? Okay. So in that, it the the event which is explained is that there was one football player. And the football hit over here with a tremendous impact and immediately he was unconscious. But then after 2-3 minutes he gained consciousness. Right? He was bit feeling a bit gloomy but still he finished the game. He, he went back to his uh, house, he slept and he never woke up. What really? And it was a real event. right? It is given in Love Belly. What they said that when there was a hit, there, was, there is one branch, there is one artery which is embedded into the bone. It is the branch of middle meningeal artery, right? More detail when we'll be studying about the bl uh, blood or the vasculature of the uh, brain. But because that artery is embedded into the skull, so when the skull breaks, so that artery also breaks. Now, if the artery is free, so then there are possibility of compression. But because it is into the bone, what I mean to say is that this is the bone and this is how the bone is going. This is inside, right? This is inside. And here is the artery, right? So this artery, they, it won't be getting a chance to get compressed soon. It starts bleeding. Now, brain has got tremendous capability of adjustment, adjusting itself. But as the blood keeps on accumulating, brain goes into the state of, it's, it's like person feels drowsy, person feels sleepy, right? As it he sinks into that, more and more and blood is getting collected. Brain is getting more and more compromised. And finally brain succumbs right this is that's why this terion is very important history is if the person is unconscious if person went unconscious for few minutes and then he regained consciousness immediately go for ct scan right and uh, and the treatment is pretty pretty easy right i uh, you you might feel like that are bapre but it is called as the treatment is called as the bar hole bar hole so bar hole is Literally with a drill, right? It is drilled and, and the blood is tapped and then it is fine. Sometimes you might have to go for a flap surgery. Flap means the portion of the that entire portion, right? With a drill, you have to cut, you have to take that piece out and then you have to say go for the needed steps, right? But yes, Tarion is the perfect answer. Very good. Right, not the paterion, right? P is silent. Uh, yes, that's right. Yes, Nehan, that is right. Uh, say by 2024, PLAB will replace by UKMLA. True. This, uh, but say if at this point of time, they have just launched the beta, beta version, right? So sometimes. If they say 2024, something what really happened to this next exam also. Last year it was declared that yes, pass is sal to aye jayegi. But now once again it is now that it will come next year. So whenever these are these changes are like fine, keep a track of it. Uh, but finally, so we can say only when it actually comes, right? Yesterday I watched one very interesting video. In that video, there were those uh, astrologers, right? Both bade bade astrologers. You must have seen, uh, many of you must have seen that video on WhatsApp. And they were telling that because, because Mangal Graha is hai, apni team ke liye aisa hai, toss ke time ki maine kundli banai, and India uh, haarne lagega, par fir bhi definitely, finally, to India ki jeet hogi, this, that, everything, all bakwas. Malab, so confidently they were doing the bakwas and then then an attempt was made to talk to talk to all these astrologers after the match right no one was available <laughs> only the name will change or the whole process uh, which process bar hole and uh, flap that is completely different process bar hole is making a hole and flap means literally cutting cutting the yes literally cutting a piece of skull taking that piece out and achha, in UKMLE no 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 there are there are few changes there are few changes 
but let the UK MLA be finalized. So we'll take one session for that also. Yes, yes, definitely. It is compulsory for, compulsory for Indian MBBS students also because after completion of their final MBBS, they have to appear for next one. After the next one score, they will be allowed to go for internship. Once they complete the internship, they'll go back to their respective universities. There, the next two will be con conducted. <coughs> Exam, next one will be having, uh, uh, say, scores, right? Next two is just pass or fail. But in case if anyone fails, then he will not be allowed to do practice. That is one. And second, he will not be allowed to go for the post-graduation. Right. A next exam passing rate, no one knows because it will be taken first time uh, next year. Right. So let's see. But, but definitely the pattern is exactly like uh, it's a sister of USMLE. Right. Anyway, our purpose is know everything very properly. Fundamental strong. You won't be having any problem whatever the way they design the exam. Trust me. If you know concepts well, you don't have to worry about any of the pattern they'll ask. You'll be able to sail through very easily. Right, definitely very easily. So starting with the cl classification of of joints, after making the hole, ha, huh, bar hole. So so then the that that flu uh, fluid that that uh, blood that is taped out, that it is taken out, and then the artery is repaired, and then the bone cement is applied just to close it. If the flap is there, so then the flap is replaced, and then the sutures they are taken, metallic sutures they are taken. There is no terion bone. That name is called as the terion, right? There is not, no bone called terion. Hmm. So that's what I'm saying. That, that, thing, that, that flap is put back. Okay. <coughs> when will we be discussing head and neck now? I'll show you the even surgical images, right? Okay, Chalo. so classification, we move to the classification of joints. See, don't confuse and don't try to cram anything, right? By the end of, say, one hour, you'll be knowing everything conceptually so strong, right? Only thing when I say, do this joint, do this movement, do it. And, and then you will always remember it, right? So first, the structural classification, right? Structural, that what is the structure? How, how is it formed? So that is what is called as the structural. Another one is functional, correct? Now, it is only the structural which is complex. Complex in the way, it is, it is described in more detail. Otherwise, rest are functional, or like say regional, they are, means you can finish within five minutes. So functional, regional, and as per number of bones, how many bones are involved? <coughs> how, many, how many bones are involved? So depending upon that, depending upon that, these classifications are based. So let's finish the easier portion first. Functional means what? Functional means simply whether there is, say over here, the, it is divided into three parts. Those joints in which there is no movement or there is slight movement or third part, obviously, they are freely movable freely movable. When we say regional, the regional is skull, vertebra and the limbs, right? So it is the skull, vertebra and the limbs, Bus, depending upon that, right? That easy. Regarding the bones, yes, we divide it into three parts. Simple one, right? In simple, in which there are two bones involved. 
So if the two bones are involved, so it is called a simple joint. When more than two bones, right, in some cases you will find that more than two bones are involved. Say, uh, say for example, the best example wrist, right? So mm, more than two, yeah, definitely more than two. So, so that is what is called as the, this is simple, that is called as the compound, right? So it is called as the compound joint. More than two bones are involved. But say say wrist, it means there will be eight bones involved, huh? but still it is called as compound. So then what is third one? Third one, it is called as the complex joint. Complex joint simply depends upon that is there, when a joint is there, if there is intra-articular disc, what does that mean? Intra-articular disc means say over here, say here is a joint right and then if there is and, and and let's say this is another bone but then in between in between there is something in between there is a disc say for example in knee joint there is meniscus right medial and lateral meniscus will be there those c shaped but they are inside the joint so due to that right there can be change in the direction say for example your tm joint right temporomandibular joint so here is the temporal bone this is the mandible so this is temporomandibular joint and in between there is a there is one uh, intraarticular disc right so it, which is inside and that can really change the direction so you can see the tm joint right you, we, we we can chew but at the same time you can protrude right side to side movements are there as such, it's a simple joint, but because of that disc, it can really change the axis. So that is why those are called as the complex joints. So simply just remember the keyword inter, right? It is inter, that is inside, right? And the articular, oh, sorry, intra intra is inside inter is it between two my mistake sorry intra huh, now it is okay intra means inside right so intra articular discs intra articular discs because inter is between international inter school between two schools between two two nations right so that is intra articular disc about this, this classification, that is functional region and as per bones, tomorrow we'll be talking in more detail, right? So that's why today we'll just leave this portion as it is, right? And we'll focus on class, structural classification. Because tomorrow when we'll be talking about clinics, clinical things, I'll be showing you many of the x-rays also. <coughs> and tomorrow I'll show you the x-rays and then you'll appreciate that okay how they uh, differ tomorrow i'll be showing you the x-ray of avascular necrosis i'll also show you cts of uh, avascular necrosis where you'll be able to make things so clearly that just i'll put the image and you'll be able to diagnose right Achha. so let's start with now this structural one right so structural as per its formation so that is what is called as the as per formation right how is it formed so let's take it on another another page right? between two bones so can't we call it as interarticular well this is present between two bones right between two bones articulation that is a joint so joint is one only right Interarticular means it would it would happen like between two joints because articulation is what in Latin it means joint, got it? Right. So it is inside the joint. That's why it is intraarticular. Am I clear? Right. When we say inter, huh, okay. <coughs> so let's start with the structural. Right now starts the real thing, real stuff. We divide it into three parts. Again, the easier things we finish first, 
so that the best part is when we'll, we'll discuss it at ease. So this one is easy. It is the fibrous, right? Fibrous type of joints, fibrous joints or the articulation means between two bones and joint is inside of it. Yeah. Yeah, there is disc within joint. That's right. That's right. So there is a joint. There is one bone. There is second bone. And in between there is something. Yeah, in between there is there is something, and that is what leads to change in the direction. Right? When when we'll see the dissection of temporomandibular joint, right? Chalo, so tomorrow I'll show you that dissection part also. Right? I'll keep on writing. Right? No problems. Uh, any one of you do one thing. Say. In case if I miss, right, write down this part that I am supposed to show you the dissection of TM joint, right, dissection of TM joint. Tomorrow I will show you that image so that it becomes crystal clear. And what, what other thing I said, make a list and after completion of the lecture just send a mail to me, right, so that there is no chance I will miss even a single thing. Otherwise I have to keep on writing somewhere, right, and, and that would be a distraction. So anyone please just make a make a note right when i say okay, tomorrow i'll be showing you this or this and just send a and and keep it like a practice every day and just send a mail to me so it will it will be a big help for help to me okay coming back to this the fibrous joint right fibrous joint <coughs> sorry the second one is called as the cartilaginous joint cartilaginous joint fibrous cartilaginous pretty easy but the guest of honor is synovial joint right that would be the synovial joint now see in case of fibrous joint as such right as such this is this is also pretty interesting joint this is the joint which is by name itself is telling fibrous tissue right so over here the bones are joined by fibrous tissue fibrous tissue so when it is a fibrous tissue involvement obviously this will make things immovable it will make things immovable or there is relatively very less movement where do we find such things right the best is sutures sutures so in sutures that is, they are into skull, and we know the word fontanelli, right? All those fontanellis, and usually these fontanellis, that is, by the eighteenth month, eighteen months, all of them they are almost fused, right? So they are they are like ready. Sutures is what we should be studying in more detail. Then there is one more, and it is called as the syndesmosis, right? Remember. Sin desmosis. This is that joint, say, which is between two bones, right? Between two bones, bones, right? And when we say bones, so then it is called as the osseous, correct? And because it is between two bones, so we'll call it inter correct inter so interosseous interosseous membrane or the interosseous ligament this is what you really find that when we have got let's say over here <coughs> sorry 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 tibia and over here it is fibula right and in between this interosseous membrane. So that is the interosseous membrane which is between both of them. Right? So that is what is called as the syndesmosis between radius and ulna. Very right. Very right. That's true. Right? So that is what is called as the interosseous membrane. So this is syndesmosis. And the third one, your teeth. That is called as which is related to gums. So it is called as the gomphosis. Gomphosis, right? 
gomphosis is that's the tooth that's the tooth and then as if a space is created for it right this is this is what is called is the pagan socket so there is a socket and in which you have just placed the thing right so this is also called as the peg and socket peg and socket so that is what we see in the tooth yeah so now we go to our our sutures right sutures worth understanding well at times we might feel like that for sutures right for sutures whatever is written whatever is explained right all these things when you'll see this is more or less like theory completely agree it is this portion is more or less like theory because once the sutures they are they are finished right they are properly ossified need there is no movement so it it is just a matter of some piece of information that what are the shapes but see how creative here you have to appreciate the creativity of an anatomist right so where he has given all sorts of various name but well there is something more also so in sutures first suture which is called as the plain suture plain suture so what plain suture is <coughs> Yes, these are the topics under general anatomy. That's right. My wish is that within first, <coughs> say, 10, 10, 15 days more, right? So maybe by the end of this month, we finish the total general anatomy because general anatomy is like foundation. Yes. And then we'll be starting with the physiology. Then we'll be starting with physiology. Physiology is what will take for at least, say, two months. By that time, you'll be rock solid in all the concepts about all the various types of ionic movements, all the types of various currents, all the receptors, so that that would be the foundation for your physiology, not only the physiology, but uh, say pathology, for your pharmacology, for your medicine, right, all such things. So, that is where will be a uh, total anatomy, total anatomy means... Uh, what is what is total anatomy? <coughs> I mean, are you talking about the other regions, etc.? Okay, so in plane, right? So that is over here. So this is the outer. Uh, at least right now, so we'll be meeting offline, right? Till you are in India. So, so this is the outer plate and this one is the inner plate, right? This is the inner plate. Ha, huh, that's... Hmm, that is for the revision. Yes, yes, they will talk about it. Uh, upper limb, lower limb, etc. Yeah, I'll be with you till MBBS, not only anatomy, but uh, all, all the regions not only all the subjects. So I'll be with you even in your final MBBS for the surgery, medicine, gynec, everything. So let's go back to our topic. So here outer plate and the inner plate and in between there is there is a sutural membrane. So this sutural membrane, right? It is the sutural membrane. So yes, this is, this is where you see this thing in say that's the nose right this nose is cartilage but when you palpate right when you palpate at one point you'll find ke, ha, a, a tough bone is there right try to palpate right this is soft as you go up this is tough so that is this thing this is the nasal bone right nasal bone so there is a right nasal bone there is a left nasal bone and in between Right? In between, there is a suture. And that is what is called as the in between two nasal bones. So, we will call it inter, internasal suture. This is a plain suture, simple as that. 
Moving to second one, it is called as the Siret. Siret. Now, Siret is simply speaking, it is like Ari, right? Ari. Or at your home, you might be having two types of knives. One with a sharp blade, right? One with a sharp blade, right? So, you can slice. But then, few, few knives, they are like that Rampuri Chakku, right? That is with such things. Right? So, say for example, when you want to remove that crust of the bread, so then with that, when you cut, so you can easily take it out. Right? These are with serrations or like Ari. Right? So, if you if you have seen that Ari, right? so that would be like a, like, like a handle and this end, it is like this. It is like this. This is what is called as the serrations. Serrations also called as the, or the notched notched right these are notch small 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 notches so these notches right they can actually cut so this the word serration means this right serrat so this is the serrat type of now how how to remember that where where do we see this a denticulate well we are coming to denticulate denticulate is different it is like big big serrations Right? These are all very fine serrations. That's why I gave you the example of churi in your, in your kitchen. Right? That churi which is not with sharp blade but those serrated blades. Right? <coughs> serrated. <coughs> serrated blades. Interparietal. Now if I say right, this name. Interparietal suture. Right, this is interparietal. Okay, between two parietal bones. So where are the parietal bones? Right, we know this suture. Right, this is none other than but the sagittal suture. Because see, this is frontal. Right, over here these are parietal. Between two parietal, that's where the suture is. Correct. Let's let me pick up the figure. Ha, huh. here it is. Here it is. See, this is a parietal bone, this is a parietal bone and in between this suture what you are watching, that is, that is the interparietal suture, correct? This is, this is frontal, right? this is frontal and this is occipital, right? So, over here, this one would be the coronal, this one would be the sagittal, this one would be the lambdoid, right? What would be the... Sure, sure. Sure, sure. Abdul, thanks a lot. Definitely. Yeah, I got pretty large number of emails from, uh, say, apart from India. I, I get, got, get lots of emails from Pakistan, Tehran and uh, Kazakhstan. Right? So, sure, definitely. Right? Okay. So, these are the two areas. Again, question open to everyone. Right, what is I'm just giving this is number one. What this is number two? First question What is number one? What is the name of this number one? This is a sort of today we'll be taking it a sort of exam also. What is the name of this number one spot? The spot where very good, very good, very good. Shabash, that is what is called as the bregma. Very good. Perfect, perfect. So, obviously, the next question. What is the name of this number two? The points, this second number. Hmm. That is, that is lambda. That's right. Very good. Yeah. And, and, and the lambdoid suture. Lambdoid is lambdoid suture. Right? But this point is lambda. This suture, right? the suture, that is the parieto-occipital suture. Are you getting it? Right? Between the parietal bone, right? that's our parietal bone and this one is occipital bone. This, this one, this is what is called as the lambdoid suture. Lambdoid suture. Fair enough. 
right? And this, when it is said, this one, right? This one, interparietal, but it is also called as our sag suture or the sagittal suture, right? <coughs> and this one is coronal, okay? Very good. Yes, yes. They, that closes first. It is the anterior fontanelle, right? Which opens. Because say bregma. Bregma is nothing but anterior fontanelle. Am I right? It is also called as the anterior fontanelle. Fontanelle. Similarly, this lambda, lambdoid, lambda point, that is, that is the posterior fontanelle. And it is the anterior fontanelle which closes last. Right? So, at the about 18 months. So, for 18 months, right, this place, this place is sensitive in case of a kid. Right? So, do take care. Achha. So, yeah. Right? So, that is interparietal or the sagittal suture. Now, see, when we say it looks like Ari, right, Siret. If, if we really compare it, if we really see it, see, right? Here it is, that suture, right? It is this suture which we are talking about. Right? That zigzag, zigzag, zigzag. So that is serrations. Now we talk about the third type of suture. The third type of suture. This suture is squamous. This is beautiful, right? Squamous. Squamous word will come even in histology. Squamous means something which is in the form of one line. One line. And the best is when we talk about the suture between temporal bone and the parietal bone. So these are parietal. This one is temporal between temporal and parietal and now I will show you that suture, right? This is temporo, temporo parietal, temporo parietal suture, right? Say instead of just talking about that it is like a thin line, plain line, see it. You see it and you never forget. How beautiful, see. That's the suture which we are talking about this one this one right I'll zoom it and I remove this color also see right so innocent so sida sada suture right no serrations nothing right should I zoom it more okay this is the suture which we are talking about because this one is the temporal, correct, and this one above is the parietal bone. So that's why we are telling it a temporoparietal suture. And see, it is, it is almost going straight, right? Straight in the form that there are there are nothing like like this, 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 this. No serrations, right? It is it is going like this almost. Plane was, okay, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll tell you that the technical difference, I'll tell you, right? But this is, this is fine. You got it? <laughs> In case of plane, Say so this was the outer plate, this is the inner plate and in between, yeah, in between there are sutural membrane and they are vertical. In case of squamous, if you, if you go for a dissection, that's the outer plate, this one is the inner plate and those sutural membranes, they are oblique, they are oblique, right. So that is how the sutural, sutural membranes, they are associated. So that's the basic difference between squamous and the plane, right? That's the basic difference between squamous and plane. It has to be at an angle because of the changes in the growth. 
while this nasal bone once formed right both the nasal bones they will be forming like this but their junction that will always be remaining there you are getting my point right the bones are there then they will keep on expanding but their junction midline midline will always be midline it will remain there only so that is how say plane right that is how the plain one then we talked about the serrate and the squamous suture right squamous suture now we move on to what you were telling about very true that is like that like denticulate right denticulate denticulate hmm. so in case of denticulate it is exactly like those as if the tooth right took 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 right like this right this is like denticulate so here remember if you have seen those alligator right so when they close their teeth right so there is no no space so that's why it is like say the grip of crocodile or, or the grip of alligator right both of them their, their teeth the way they are attached that is tremendously powerful this is where this denticulate it generates power because the bone itself is so so important and that is the example of lambdoid suture now we know that lambdoid is associated with 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 the occipital bone occipital which is literally like a gunda bone right so powerful wait and yeah here it is the occipital bone so just just to see yeah here it is here it is the best view for watching the denticulate see see this right let me zoom here it is right beyond doubt you can say yes these are like tooth right tooth so that is the denticulate right? it is called as the denticulate type of suture fine <coughs> so that is our lambdoid suture finally it's it looks like bead sutures <laughs> And and finally, the last one, right? So this was denticulate, and the last one is shindylysis, right? Very interesting name. Shindylysis. Now this is a very very special type of suture, right? It is. Acha okay. It is a big suture, huh? Yeah, it is a big suture. Shindylysis, in which there is wedge and groove. Now, regarding this, you will really enjoy this suture when you will actually be learning head and neck, right? Because these are the sutures which are, say, like those vomer bones, etc., where where you you enter and and you start watching it at a very higher level. Right, that how it comes into contact with sphenoid, etc. So right now we'll just remember it like that. It is a suture in which there is a wedge, right, and the another bone is entering into that bone, and thus this forming a suture. But it is like a wedge, like this is a wedge, and then it enters into this, right. So another bone penetrates into this. So that is shindylysis. So where where exactly are we right now, right? Just just for our our proper coordination, we we were talking we are talking about the classification of the joints, right? In the classification, we talked about that okay, there are the four major structures, uh, four major types of classifications, right? One 
which was like functional, that the, whether there was movement, less movement or freely movement, freely movable joints. Then there was regional, this was very easy, skull, vertebra and the, and the limbs. And the third one was as per number of bones, right? Less than, I mean, less than two to how it can be. Well, the two bones, more than two bones and, and the complex one, right? In which in, in, inside, right? Inside, intra-articular disc. So this was the keyword, intra-articular, articular disc. And this will be into the complex joint, right? So these were the three oblique and plain sutural straight that's right that's right their sutural membrane the membrane which is between two plates so in case of squamous it is oblique and in case of plain it is straight that's right and uh, <coughs> the first and that was the structural one right structural and in structural we distributed it in the form of one which was the fibrous then the cartilaginous, right? And the third one was the synovial, right? In fibrous, right? Are you with me, right? In fibrous, we again divided into three parts, right? In, in that, we said that joints which are for the sutures, right? Then... We talked about syndesmosis, syndesmosis, and in syndesmosis we said that it is between tibia fibula, or very rightly you said about the about the radius ulna, and then the gomphosis, right? Gomphosis, gomphosis, that is the gums, right? <coughs> huh, that is fracture. Yeah, that is fracture. So, but we many times use it. So let let's change it, right? You are right. As number of bones, right? Sutural bones, sutural bones. Then the skull. Sutural bones. Say many times. This is what really happens. Let me draw, right? This is a suture, and then suture it goes like this, and then it goes like this. So in between, over here there is a bone. There is a bone. Right? This is sutural bone. This is sutural bone. It's a variation, right? Yeah, whether it is present or absent, well, depends upon person to person. And it is it is a uh, accidental finding. Its importance is just one. It means during during the study of radiograph, you have to keep this thing in mind. During the uh, study of X-ray skull, you have to just keep in mind because they sometimes look isolated. If the age of the patient is not more, so right, they might look isolated, and you might confuse what exactly it is. But not to worry. The moment you see the two plates, one is the AP and second is the lateral. Immediately you will come to know that okay, this is nothing but a sutural bone. Right? I'll show you. Make a list. Right? In the list, add this sutural bone. Right, X-ray of sutural bone. I'll show you. I do have one very good X-ray for it. I'll show you. Okay. So and and then in sutures we talked about right over here in sutures. So let's take it over here. In sutures we talked about five different types. One which was a plain suture. Right. Then it was that chaku. Right. Serrated. Right. Then second one was very Sharif, that is the squamous, right? Fourth one, literally Gunde Jasa, that is denticulate, correct? And the fifth one, just to impress the name, Shindylasis, right? Shindylasis. Here, not to miss that this is like wedge and groove. So there is, there is a bone, there is a wedge, right? And then another bone is sitting into it. So that is what is called as the wedge and groove. Groove. Right. So that's what we have talked about till this point of time. Now we move on to and still remember our chief guest, our today's chief guest is synovial. Right. So we are about to approach to synovial. 
Before that, we just finish cartilaginous joint, which is a very small topic. So here it is, the cartilaginous, cartilaginous joint. <coughs> Divide it into two parts, right? Simple. Was primary and secondary. Primary and secondary. So in primary, this will start and these are all temporary. These are, yeah, shindylesis, I told you that it is the vomer bone which is, which is into the skull, right? But we'll talk about, that's, that's why I said that we'll talk about that how exactly it fits because unless and until you, you don't see, you are bound to forget. So don't worry, in head and neck, I'll show you or I can show you tomorrow. Right? Just write it in the list. Tomorrow I can show you. So once you'll see it on x-ray, it will be much better. Or you have to really actually dissect and you have to reach to that point so that you, you get the clarity. But no problem, we can, we can see. <coughs> so here it is, primary. Remember, primary is purely temporary. Right? Apart from other descriptions that what exactly it does, etc. But this is a temporary. Temporary means what? This will be converted to bone. Right, this will be converted to bone. So initially, this is what is also called as the synchondrosis. Synchondrosis. Chondro. Yes, that means we are talking about cartilage. Which cartilage? Over here, there is a highline cartilage. Highline cartilage, name itself is telling. We learned that halos, right? Halos, it is not halos, right? It is halos. Halos means it is shiny. It is classically translucent. Translucent. And translucent, butter paper. Right? Like a butter paper. You, you gave the example. Right? Butter paper. So that light can pass through it, but shape cannot pass. So in many of the, say, glasses, right? You can, you can appreciate that light is coming from the opposite side, but you can't really appreciate the silhouette or the shape of the person. So that is what is called as the synchondrosis. Now these temporary ones, they are replaced by bones, right? They get converted to bone. They, they get converted to bone and that's why it is synostosis. That process is called as synostosis. So then why are they there for the first place? They are over there just for one reason, because in the initial stages of life, it is needed for the growth. Once the growth is over, then, then they just say goodbye, right? Say, for example, the best example between diaphysis and epiphysis, right? Between the diaphysis, between the diaphysis. So over here, let's say this one, this one is the growth plate, right? This one is the growth plate or the epiphyseal plate, right? Growth plate or the epiphyseal plate. So here is epiphysis. Here is the diaphysis, right? So in between, right, they form and then later on this gets ossified and then it is fixed. Pus. Now its size cannot increase. So this portion goes away. Then you can't see the growth plate. Right? So this is one of the example of synostosis or the primary cartilaginous uh, joint. Right? That is the epiphyseal plate. So our first example is epiphyseal plate or the growth plate. Same thing you can watch even at two other places. One Costochondral junction. Costo ribs. Chondra, that is the cartilage. So here is the rib, right? Let's see if we, if we really draw that this is the rib, and then, then we have got the, the cartilage. So this is what is called as the costochondral junction. But later on, so they, they fuse completely and then there is no possibility of any movement. Also, 
chondrosternal, right? That this one, this uh, this cartilage, it will also be landing on the first, that is the first costo. Uh, sorry, it would be chondrosternal, right? It would be chondrosternal because it would be the cartilage and the sternum. So we just change it. It would be chondrosternal. So first chondrosternal joint between the cartilage, first first cartilage, that is the cartilage of first rib and the sternum. So this is also later on it fi it it's fixed so that the thoracic inlet that is freezed, right? It's freezed. So these are the initial one. That's why they are called as the primary cartilaginous. <coughs> what about the secondary ones? Now these secondary ones, they are there, but their best name is, remember, it is symphysis. Remember, it like symphysis. They are fibrocartilaginous, right? Fibrocartilaginous. When I say fibrocartilaginous, what color is fibrocartilage? What is the color of fibrocartilage? Because see, we have talked about three cartilages, right? Highline cartilage, which is halos. That means it is translucent, it is shiny. That's right. Fibro is white. And the third one, third one is elastic. So how do you remember that fibro is white and it is not yellow? Because not a single person has made mistake till this point. And not a single person has written it as yellow, elastic. That's right. That's right. If you remember it, it like say elastic. That's right. Right. That is the elastic cartilage is yellow. So that is elastic. You actually tried speaking elastic, right? You, right? I, I enjoy speaking it elastic. Okay. So let's talk about symphysis. So I am taking it like this, right, on a new page. <laughs> Jaydev, yes. Uh -huh. <coughs> so what was what was this? Ha, huh, symphysis. Symphysis. Now these symphysis, they are those portions where there is very limited movement. Right? You won't find much of the movement. Over here, strength is needed. Right? The strength is needed. So there would be much less movement over here. And classically, if you'll see that it is the symphysis pubis. Right? Symphysis pubis. One. Right? Between two pubic bones at that junction. <laughs> At, at that junction, right, that is the symphysis pubis, where the two pubic bones meet and then that is there. So, there is limited movement, but the basic, basic function is the strength. Then, second is, this is manubrium, manubrium, and this one is sternum, right? This is manubrium, manubrium, and this one is sternum. So here, right? So when you try to feel immediately, you will... <coughs> Costochondral junction? Okay, I'll, I'll explain. So over here, right? Where where you can feel the trachea and then that's the... That's the... That's the manubrium. And just slide down and you'll feel a ridge, right? A very strong ridge. That is the manubriosternal joint, right? This one. Right, that is the menu between the manubrium and the sternum. So this manubro sternal joint, this is also a fibrous joint, right? Where there is limited movement, but the toughness is there. And third, intervertebral disc. Right? Though the spine is so big, but the movements they are definitely limited so these are the examples 
of symphysis, right? Secondary cartilaginous symphysis, right? Okay. So now we start with our final one, and that is the synovial joint. <coughs> Costochondral Here it is This is the joint we are talking about This is the joint right? Costo that is rib and the chondral that is the cartilage and it is this this joint this is first chondro that's the sternum sternal joint fair enough right and using the different color this one is manubrium this is the sternum right so in between that is the manubrio sternal joint <coughs> So, let us start with the synovial joint. Now, in synovial joint, we have to be very systematic because it will be giving us some very good concept. Primary joint is temporary, yes, because it, it goes into the uh, synostosis later on, right. Now, yeah, synovial joint, the now we will be talking, right. And uh, yes, they are, they are like very special joints, right, they are very special joints. Their importance itself is so good. The first one is, you will find hyaline cartilage. Right? When we were talking about hyaline cartilage, we said first that hyaline is what? Articular cartilage. Right? Articular cartilage. Yes, this is the cartilage which you will find everywhere. Right? In case of synovial joint. Because these are the joints which are giving tremendous level of mobility. Our entire body is moving on the basis of synovial joint only. In synovial, there would be variations, which will give you the understanding that how exactly on which axis they really move. Right? Now, highline cartilage, blood supply, nil, no blood supply. Any nerve supply, any nerve supply, no, there is no nerve supply. So, that is why if hyaline cartilage is not having any blood supply, from where will it get the nutrition? Question, open to everyone. Where will it get the nutrition? How will it get the nutrition? Because hyaline cartilage is a live structure. Live structure requires, requires nutrition, right? So, if there is no blood supply, so from where will it get nutrition? Excellent, excellent. Diffusion, diffusion. Well, I was very happy yesterday when when I put that poll that uh, how many of you are revising it 100%, almost 80% of you are doing it 100%. Very nice. Good, 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 good. Very good. But keep this consistency going and see the difference. Just give me three months and after three months, you touch any of the subject, you will find, yes, it is not difficult. Medical science is really very interesting and you will be able to understand it properly so you don't, won't have to cram. That's why this foundation is, is vital, right? Even a small doubt, always let me know. Chalo. So, this means that we need to give nutrition to the highline, to the, to the highline cartilage and that is given by what is called as the synovial fluid. Now, this synovial fluid, right? Let us draw a figure and things will be crystal clear, right? Things will be crystal clear. Here is a bone, right? Here is a bone, right? And this bone will be having that articular cartilage. Chalo, done. Right, this is the cartilage. Don't worry about the shape, right? And then there is another bone, 
and then there is another bone this bone will also be having the having the high line cartilage right and all these they will be packed packed in what fibrous capsule right this will be the fibrous capsule now inner side of this fibrous capsule inner side right inner side this inner side this this inner side this one right that is the synovial membrane right so that would be this one would be inner side huh? so that will be the synovial membrane so synovial membrane will be having synovial cells right and these cells they release a fluid they release a fluid now this fluid is very rich in one substance what is called as the hyaluronic acid very rich now this hyaluronic acid those who are say if you, if you are using those serum right there are some facial serums available so you will see that many contents are written but at times you will find that the face serum with hyaluronic acid now if you really take that serum it would be quite viscous yeah for skin care exactly for skin care right it will be thick so that is what is called as the viscous viscous it is not like water it is quite thick so that is because of hyaluronic acid and thanks to this that this fluid it gives two things one lubrication lubrication viscous means its structure will become like oil oil like right and when the viscosity is more so that means it will give much better uh, gliding movements right it will give much better movements because it is like a gearbox and second the nutrition so that's the reason we were telling that this is where the synovial fluid so this fluid which is released right this fluid which is real sorry this fluid which is released and it fills up this entire space entire space so it gives lubrication as well as nutrition to all the cartilages which are present inside right and that's called as the that's called as the synovial what sorry 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 that's what is called as the synovial fluid <coughs> so that is our, the second speciality of synovial fluid which gives nutrition and lubrication right lubrication hmm. the third in synovial joints not always right not always but you may find <coughs> inter intra intra articular discs or at times they are called as the meniscus meniscus so this is the meniscus so when say this is your femur right and oh sorry femur let me draw a better femur with condyles that's right right femur <coughs> what we should eat so that synovial fluid can increase well interestingly it is said that if you why ghee is so important that those who run right they should have ghee ghee is not that bad as what many people say it is it is really very good thing right it can also be applied at knees yeah <laughs> you will go bankrupt deepak seriously because those hyaluronic things they are so expensive right i think they they cost about 600 700 rupees for this small bottle 
right? So just order three, four bottles for your left knee, three, four bottles for your right knee, and tell this thing to your father, right? Danda leke marenge. Right? That what what are you trying for your for your such uh, for your knees? <laughs> oh, nine hundred. <laughs> so, so this one, that one would be the tibia, okay, that one would be the tibia and in between, in between there are C-shaped, they are called as the meniscus, meniscus, ah, so that is logical. Ghi is logical. So intraarticular discs or meniscus, these are the, that is what you at times get. And then on top of it, let's say, these are the fibrous liga, uh, fibrous membrane. And then there are some, some ligaments attached. Some ligaments. Now these ligaments, they are called as the collateral ligament collateral ligaments. So, these collateral ligaments, they can be internal, they can be external, depending upon various various joints, but their entire function is the support one, right? So, internal or external. So, that's why when we'll be specifically learning about the knee joint, at that point, we'll see that what, how these ligaments, they are arranged, right? But just in general, they are for support, right? They are for support because such a big joint so, they, this do, joint should not move side to side. So, that's why it is so important. When the muscles start getting weak, that is where the knee joints, they start giving up the way and it leads to several problems, right? Okay. So, this is about synovial joint. Now, let's see the synovial joint in the light of what exactly will they be doing, right? This will clear the concepts in a very fine way. One, what is called as the plane or the gliding, gliding joint. So, in such cases, in such cases, this is one plate, this is the second plate and they both, they both move like this, right? Simple, both are absolutely plane and they move like this. At where do we see, etc. We'll come to that. So one is called as the gliding. Second, it purely depends upon the axis. In which direction things will be moving, right? So if it is one axis, either transverse axis or the vertical axis, but one axis only. So it is all obviously called as the uniaxial. Uniaxial, true. Second, if there are two axes, so it means there is one joint which is moving in transverse axis and second, uh, say, longitudinal axis. So we'll call it, so two axis, so we'll call it biaxial. And then comes the multi-axial. That's how the synovial joint is divided, right? So in case of, say, plane gliding, nothing more, right? We'll just talk about there are only few joints which are doing like this. But in case of uniaxial, there would be two different types, right? Biaxial, two different types. Multiaxial, again, two different types. So, one, two, one, two, one, two, right? That's how we'll see. Just for the name and then we go into the more detail with specific. In uniaxial, one what is called as the hinge, right? Hinge, the way door opens and closes, right? Second one, what is called as the pivot, right? Don't worry, we'll, we'll watch examples and the orientations of all of them. Then biaxial, which is condylar, right? Condylar. You see those condyles, femur, right? Femur and tibia, right? They are condylar. Then ellipsoid, simply because of the shape this is, it is called. Then multi-axial, so one which is called as the saddle, right? Saddle, something which we put it on horse for the riding, right? It's whose shape is like this, right? And we sit over here, so this acts as a back support and then one rides. So that is the saddle. And last one, 
is ball and socket. So remember it, like for every axis there are two examples. Now we dive more in depth, right? Starting with the plane 1. So 1, right? Time to time we'll keep on revising that where exactly do we stand, okay? So the plane 1. If you really look at this na plane or the gliding, right, and it is a synovial joint, right? So gliding synovial joint. By the time when the list is over, na, literally we forget ke where were we? We were trying to do what? So that's why let's make a cartoon. Right? Let's make a cartoon. This is skull. Thick. Then these are the cervical vertebra. And that's the sternum. After sternum, we can watch all those ribs, right? Someone is definitely going to hit me. These are beauty bones, right? Clavicle, right? And this is another one, and that is scapula. Thick scapula. And then over here, this is, yes, you are right, humerus. Then radius and ulna. And these are what? Carpals, right? Hi. These are metacarpals. And then this is thumb and all those fingers, right? Don't worry about the proportion. Just we try to remember. So same way over here, here is the humerus and then radius, ulna. These are the carpals and these are the metacarpals and, and the phalanges, correct? Over here, this one, this one and this one. So, this one in between, this is the sacrum, right? That is the pubic bone. This one would be the pubic symphysis. And this one, right? Which are a femur. <laughs> Robert's left the child. <laughs> hmm. And then, say this is... These are the two bones, right? And and this chota one, right? How can we forget patella? You know? Then tibia, fibula, and then once again, these are our tarsals, and then, then those are the metatarsals, and then the thumb, right? And do, 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 do small fingers. This is the big toe, tuck, 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 all those phalanges. So he is ready, right? He is ready. All we need to do is just mark that which of the bones, which of the bones, right? They are plain, right? Plain gliding movement. So let's start with the best one, right? The easiest one. It is this. That is because we start with the beauty bone. New Avenger, wicket keeper, huh? wicket keeper, yes. Right, let's name him. Also, let's, you want to give some name? I give some name. Right? Meantime, I am crooked, man. And Bichara, he is so good. Okay, chalo. So that we start with our beauty bone first, right? So that we always ah bony. That is a good name, bony, right? So this is or this one, right? This one. This is a joint between beauty bone. That is the clavicle, and with one of the say process of scapula. So we call this acromioclavicular, right? Acromio. Clavicular. Clavicular. So this is a joint, acromioclavicular. Bony <laughs> You know, Shonak, I was I was about to then when uh, Asmi said na bony. 
this this thought came in my mind but then i said okay, no no i i should not speak but you wrote <laughs> but i think his spelling is different na it's not b o n y na it's not boni kapoor na his spelling is something different so then it is fine no one can challenge us i think that boni kapoor is is a good name is hani kapoor acha b o double n y ha to then to you are binda sir because we have just eliminated one n ha so this is our boni kapoor a change why to write double o yaar right this right now no one can touch us the right to speech is broken So here is the acromioclavicular joint, and second process was that white cowa, correct? That is the clavicular. Uh, that is the coracoid process. So this is acromioclavicular. <coughs> acromioclavicular is one. The second one, all these vertebra, we have seen that thing. That one vertebra is is on the top of second vertebra, and there is superior and inferior articular facet, correct? so that is the articulation articulation right between intervertebra and right, between two vertebra so superior and inferior articulation between vertebra then this one this one we pick up this is all what these are carpals right yes all those eight bones yeah she looks too pretty try to catch her exactly right so that is all these bones inter <coughs> carpal <coughs> intercarpal right then not only that much we mark this area we mark this area right so if this is carpal so this will be the metacarpal so the joint which is between carpal and metacarpal right joint between carpal and metacarpal is carpo metacarpal right this is carpo metacarpal carpo metacarpal joint right so this is the reason right you enjoy when the chat is open because imagine how boring it would it be if we if we shut down the chat you know even i won't enjoy teaching so many times it is said that you make the film yeah, we can make the film and and yes it the, it will go okay carpo metacarpal joint inter intercarpal joint and this is between sacrum and uh, iliac but wo maza nahi aata so this is now between see, see this is sacrum sacrum is here and this one is iliac right so ilium ischium pubis so one of the bone is ilium so this this joint is called as the sacroiliac so sacro iliac so that sacroiliac joint that is also flat but rest of them they are without any problem you should be able to guess if carpals so then why not tarsals right why not tarsals so that is intertarsal intertarsal t t for tongue right that is palm so intertarsal and similarly over here the joint right over here between tarsal and metatarsal right i am writing on opposite side just because for the clarity right otherwise obviously present on both the sides bollywood superhero eh, boss don't write <laughs> so acha okay our this character is hero then it is fine so this is tarso metatarsal between tarsal and metatarsal that is the joint right <laughs> right so these are the main joints right these are the main joints now if you want to add something to it right so you can use it if you fight with some non medico so you can use these thing as a gali right because they won't understand it and so crico thyroid right 
Now, if the fight goes to higher level, so literally you tell someone ki tala, jo krikko, erytinoid jasa lagta hai, right? When you say this thing that that person would would won't be able to answer. Krikko erytinoid. Right? Where exactly are they? Well, the cricoid cartilage, erytinoid cartilage, they are all into larynx. Right? So, at the most, right now, all you have to do is just put your hand over here and speak cricothyroid and cricoerytinoid. And, and trust me, you have used those, those uh, joints. Right? More, when we'll actually watch the larynx. Right? Which is one of the fantastic topic. Okay. So, by the way, let me keep on saving it. I have not saved it. Oh, now take me. <coughs> hmm. So done. Plane is done. Right? So this one is through. Now we move on to the uniaxial. And in uniaxial, we go for this hinge. Very easy. Right? Within next few minutes, things will be over. Because we have, say, cleared the difficult portions. So second one, which is the hinge joint, right? Hinge joint. So what happens in case of hinge joint? Hinge joint is a very solid joint. <laughs> ha, I'll, I'll keep on doing it. But see, the hinge joint, what hinge joint is doing, it, there is only one axis. So here it is, our humerus, right humerus and we have seen the ulna ulna has got that notch ulna has got the notch so if we really want to draw the axis that axis goes through and through so it is like a like a transverse axis and say this is humerus this one this one is the ulna so when the movement that movement it goes like this only this is the only possible movement right which is flexion and extension, right? Flexion and extension, right? This one is humerus, this one is ulna. <laughs> so in this, what is the speciality? The speciality is that surface is pulley-like. Its surface is like pulley, pulley-like surface, right? And then there are strong ligaments attached so that the movement is into this transverse transverse axis right so that is what is called as the hinge joint right hinge the next one we take it to the next page or not we take it to the next page <coughs> Achha, this reminds me of one thing when we are talking about this this joint right this movement there is one another one which is which is called as the say c1 and c2 cervical right cervical vertebra so c1 which is also called as the atlas and c2 is also called as the axis i want that all of you should train this particular joint you should train your this joint right now why why such thing this is uniaxial uniaxial <coughs> this is also called as the atlas and axis right so we say this atlanto axial joint well so far so this is the all theory right let's dive deep what happens that in this case say over here this was a hinge joint right this was a hinge joint if we go for it the next one is what this one is pivot joint right so see the name difference the pivot joint over here c1 c2 right they are cervical we said atlanto axial joint but when we see the shape of C1, so it is like a very delicate ring, very delicate ring, right? Ring-like structure, right? Actually, it is like a ring. 
when we look at C2, this is quite a tough bone, right? But there is a very prominent, right? Now, now this is also like a rounded structure, quite solid, right? Much bigger. But this portion is called as the dense. Dense. Now, this is, this is considered that this is C2. C2 is axis, right? And this one, this one is dense. The C1 would really fit like this, right? So this dense, this dense is acting like a one point the way it would rotate, right? In only one axis, it is rotating, right? This is atlas, this is axis, and this is called as atlanto axial joint. This is the atlanto axial joint, which is used to say because over here the axis would be axis would be vertical, right? This would be the axis, so this would be like a vertical axis, and this is the joint which I told you that you should really develop, right? Because this is the joint to say no. To save your time, to save your time, right? The day you develop guts to say no, you will be saving lots and lots of time. So this is, so just think it like this, for this movement, for no, it is the atlanto axial joint, right? Makes sense, right? If, if this is the dense and the ring is like this, this is the only possible movement, right? So that's why, because it is having this point, right, which is called as pivot. The point which is, which is responsible for the rotation. Up and down, wait, 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 coming to that. I'm coming to that, right? So that's why, because it has got one specific point, because say this is how it would be, that dense would be coming over here, right? Dense would be coming over here, and then there would be a transverse ligament of the atlas so that dense remains over there right so thinking like this and then this is this encircles and then there is a ligament which holds the dense right so that c1 c2 they remain into that position so there is a transverse ligament also right this is the transverse ligament that is also there and that's how it really moves into the vertical axis so this is the ligament. <coughs> uh, I'm coming to uh, other parts. Right? That what you said, yes, no, etc. So that's why this would be, now it has got a pivot. Pivot means central point around which the things move. And that is what is called as our pivot joint. This is how it gets differentiated from the hinge joint. So this is hinge and this is our third and that is the pivot joint, right? Also called as trochoid, trochoid joint, right? Just another name. Eventually, you can also add one more joint, and that is radio ulnar joint. That is between the radius, radio ulnar joint. So you have got the superior radio ulnar joint inferior radio ulnar joint so that's where it leads to those movements right now the movements they are into the long axis so when the person is standing right it is the long axis which is going like that so that is also the example of the pivot joint radio ulnar because there is an annular ring right there is an annular ring yes yes <laughs> Say the for the understanding, so just you have to remember that C2 axis it has got that projection, that projection which is out, and the above one it holds it. Bus that's the concept. Otherwise, so in C1, C2, there are so many things, so many muscle attachments and, and their movements, etc. But for the understanding, to say no, 
it is this joint which is involved. <coughs> now, when you are telling for no, what about the yes? What about the yes? Huh, C1. See, this is that occipital bone. Correct? Occipital bone. And then we have got, say, the ring of the C1. And inside, inside, there is dense and then there is this C2. Where does nerve pass? Nerve would pass from the sides, right? This, this ligament, this attachment is only in this much area. In this much area. Now, so they pass from here. They, they will be going from sideways. It's very far. Right? C1, C2, yeah. Because it is only the posterior portion. If I really zoom it, right? So, as I said that this is the whole C1. So, the dense is over here. That's it. So, otherwise this entire area too is open. From there, the things can, can pass. Right? No worries. Achha. So, occipital. Main spinal now coming from brain. Huh? That's what I'm telling. Because, say this from occipital region, from, from foramen magnum, right? Then there is C1, then there is C2. So, there is a complete space, right? This is only a small portion which is connected. So, that's what I tried to demonstrate. That if this is the entire C1, right? This is the portion from where the dense is connected. But then, this entire area to is open. So, it goes. Achha. So, this is the occipital. This one is atlas. This one is axis. Over here, this is the joint which is used to say no. Right? So, in that case, it is this joint which is used to say yes. Right? And that is Atlanto occipital. So easy. Right? Atlanto occipital. Now, see, in Atlanto occipital, right, because occipital, it has got big condyles, so on which the movement, the whole head can move so easily. So, this, this thing is possible. At the same time, because those condyles, right, articular condyles, they are quite big, right, so it can glide. So, it can do even this also. It can use even this also. Just before starting the lecture, I asked one of my friends, that there is one actor, right? There is one actor, right? He just do, does like this, right? This. And so, there were several names, right? That Ajay Devgan and... But no, it was not Ajay De Devgan. It was Pankaj, uh, Pankaj Tripathi, right? It was Pankaj Tripathi, right? Ke, haan, aisa kar do, right? So, he is using that Atlanto occipital joint. Ah, Pankaj Tripathi, right? Atlanto occipital joint. Right, this and uh, yeah, because maybe in case of now we should not take, uh, but it's okay. Ajay Devgan, right? People do all sorts of mimicry, right? Okay. Okay. For Ajay Devgan, to even leaning tower of Pisa must be looking straight, right? And maybe so, Atlanta occipital. So that is the joint which is for this or this, right? And and doing this, so those joints multiple. But we were talking about C1, C2, uniaxial, so only one joint. So we talked about synovial, uh, this uh, synovial joints, right, in which we talked about plane, and then, then we talked about uniaxial, hinge, and pivot. Now we move on to the biaxial. So biaxial is the easiest one, biaxial, because it has got for rotation, rotation is no, no, rotation is no, right? See, this is what? This is rotation, you know? I won't tell you. So, biaxial means two axes, right? And for this, we have got two, one condyler, 
very easy to understand and the ellipsoid even easier to understand just in a minute you will know condyler means there is one surface right where this is condyle and literally knee joint and then we have got tibia <coughs> right we have got yeah only 180 degree rotation so this is this is femur and this one is tibia they both are called as condyle one is convex second is concave this is convex this is concave right but this and this they both are called as the condyle condyle means something big circular right and it leads to right that's the transverse axis so that's the transverse axis so it is on this transverse axis movement occur if no muscles and nerves then skulls rotate 360 degree well surisha you should start writing horror films huh? horror film stories because i have seen in those ram gopal verma movies right i don't know how how they really make it I mean he <laughs> right pura chakkar mar ke <laughs> so in transverse axis this is in knee joint right this is in knee joint you have got the movements possible right? you have got the movement that is flexion extension right flexion extension that is the movement but over here say flexion and extension correct that is there but there is one more movement there is one more movement which is on the vertical axis now see transverse axis flexion extension understood right they even rotate their legs backwards was akash i am coming to that right say we humans we can't do it much but partially we can but those bhoots they have got some extra flexibility and that those bhoots right they do this extra uh, rotatory effect on their vertical axis so next time when you meet any of the bhoot right ask them there was two things i want to ask you one is you don't have that c1 c2 and second on your legs right when normally there is a condylar joint there is a flexion extension right now see all of you are sitting when you this is this is your leg do it like this so this is flexion extension right immediately you will come to know that whether you belong to human or you belong to bhoot right about to give that experiment so this is flexion extension correct that is easy right even bhoot can do we can also do the second one is say let me draw right this is this is your leg and this is your your world famous foot right now knees bend try to rotate right try to rotate right so you will be able to rotate like this and this so this is like a long axis which is passing through this is a long axis which is passing through this is the vertical axis now anyone who can rotate full 360 degree right please message because then we have to make a separate group for you guys right if you can really rotate the full 360 degree right that is i think who was talking about uh, deepak nahi deepak nahi ha ah, surisha if no muscle now then skull rotates 360 and uh, and akash yes right so i think akash you you won't be able to rotate 360 degree and bhoot medic was again a new name has come bas khatam now now you guys will start bhoot sir also in online lecture khatam okay so that is the partial rotation right this is what is called as the partial rotation cracking you bones of patient to release pain ha huh. remind me uh, tomorrow we'll talk about it 
right? When we'll be doing the practical part, we'll talk about it. So vertical axis, that is the partial rotation, right? Plus one more joint, and that is temporo mandibular joint, right? Temporo mandibular joint. So this is this is the joint which can also lead to that uh, two axis. So that's the reason you can speak as well as you can chew, right? <coughs> this TM joint. We talked about condyler, right? Because of the condyles. So the next one is ellipsoid. Ellipsoid. And in case of, say, ellipsoid, there is this, this, right? And like this. Huh, femur, tibia. Femur and tibia. Fibula to a smaller one. So, knee joint is, is for that, right? Actually, the knee joint is between femur and the tibia. So, here is, this is ellipsoid, right? This is ellipsoid. So, here, it is flexion extension, right? But then there is abduction, adduction also. Abduction and adduction. So, your wrist joint, flexion, extension, flexion, extension, right? But at the same time, adduction, abduction, right? Abduction, adduction, abduction, adduction. Similarly, between, say, this is, this is what, these are your metacarpals. These are your phalanges. So, this joint would be metacarpophalangeal joint, correct, right? MP joint metacarpo so between metacarpals and the phalanx so metacarpo phalangeal joint so basically our finger right so here is flexion extension flexion extension things are occurring at this level flexion extension flexion extension but it can do abduction adduction abduction adduction clear right so this is ellipsoid type of joint because in case of in case of uh, say condyler because those condyles they fit so properly that they won't be giving so much room as compared to ellipsoid in ellipsoid the range of the movement that would be much better much better right abduction adduction and flexion extension so that's the basic difference between both of them flexion extension abduction adduction possible movement is more so metacarpophalangeal joint this is one example then second one that one is the wrist right and the third one i think with ijat he can we can write the name of say pankaj tripathi right we'll just request him that was don't ask for any of the charges because we are using your name but your style like this right that is that head tilt right head tilt right it is so good and he is really very funny in i in in one of the case to banta hai i think in that he saw so he said ke bas mujhe to kuch nahi karna padta main to bas yun karta hu aur wo sab taaliyan bajate hain right so that head tilt that's okay. In exam, you can't write Pankaj Tripathi. You have to write the name of the joint. What's the name of that joint? Question. What's the name of the joint? An ellipse has two axes and the movement along two axes. Very right. Very right, Ashwada. You are right. You are right. Because, because, say, bigger surfaces are available, so it can move in two axes. But, what is the name of Pankaj Tripathi brand joint? name of the joint on which joint we say yes and the head tilt yes and the head tilt it was it was between occipital bone exactly very good very good division yes 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 nice 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 it is atlanto occipital 
occipital joint. Very good. Good one. Good one. Good one. The last one, and this is when, see, we just go back, right? We just go back, go back, go back, where were we? Synovial joint, and here. So we talked about this condylar, we talked about ellipsoid. Finally, saddle and ball and socket. So only this one and this one left out, right? Just a matter of minute. Right, name itself is is there, right? So this is like saddle. So saddle is what? Saddle is that, right? What is put on that ghoda, right? For for the riding. This shape, this shape, is called as the concavo convex, right? Because this is one bone. And the second bone would be lying like this. This is concave wo convex. Right? This is concave wo convex. We say no way that lantoaxial joint. Very right. So this is concave. This one is concave, right? This half is concave and this second half is convex. And even the opposite bone is also like that. So that's why we'll be using the word reciprocal. Reciprocal. So we have the opposite bone exactly ulta of it so that they both are in close approximation, right? Here we'll be understanding just two important concepts. Yeah, they are coming to that. They are coming to that. Thumb joint. You are very right, Siddham. <coughs> and that is that over here, flexion and extension, that would be possible, right? No doubt about it. But there would be a rotation also. Rotation. Understand the word and it is called as the conjunct rotation, right? Conjunct. What exactly conjunct is? It is that movement which is associated with some other movement. So when we try to move thumb, you will find that even some other muscles, other, other things also they move. right? So here the rotation with, with some other movements, right? some other movements, other moves, right? that's fine. And the moves. The reverse, the ulta of conjunct is called as the adjunct. Right? It is called as the adjunct. So in adjunct means what? It is absolutely independent movement, like knee. So you can really move right independently. So that is adjunct means independent. Independent movement. Right? Say for say for example, knee, knee joint. So that's what we humans can do in a restricted way and our bhut bhais, right, they can go for full rotation, right. So that is the adjunct movement, right. And this thumb is, is first carpal and metacarpal. So first carpo metacarpal joint. So for rest of the fingers, rest of the fingers, <coughs> sorry, for the rest of rest of the fingers, it was ellipsoid, right? Metacarpophalangeal. While over here, carpo metacarpal first joint, right? That is that is our thumb, right? That is our thumb. That is this joint, right? Between the carpal bones and the metacarpal. Right? That is our saddle joint. You know, in in uh, this this is something which is because say, it is associated with this conjunct. In music, when you really define the musics, right? Even this this is used in that. Uh, what is called as the conjunct. 
they are called as the conjunct motion right ha will go for revision right no problem so this is this is like in music it is called as the conjunct motion and and the second one it is not adjunct it is called as the disjunct motion right now say all of those those who are into music right so if we really write that say 4 and 5 right conjunct motion so so when when the notes are made right i'll i'll make few few notes quickly say for example if it is like this and the second one is is say it has to be like this the third one third one can go like this uh this and and this right this is what is called as the conjunct motion conjunct motion means the difference difference in the note right one after another this is a small interval and it is not more than one step and it is called as the degree so it is maximum just one scale degree so this is what is called as for the vocals this is also called as the vocal motion so such songs which are divine like this they are very easy to sing right they are very comfortable person is very comfortable to sing such songs against that right those who are really fantastic singers they can go for what's called as the disjunct motion and in disjunct motion this particular that is what is called as the leap there is a big difference the so same notes if i draw it right it if it is like this right the second note it skips one level and that note could be this one right and on the larger scale and then this is the thing and again the third one it can go on its peak right and then go like goes like this goes like this 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 right so that is where the gap is more so this is what is called as the disjunct right it is called as the disjunct and they are difficult to sing right difficult to sing so this is just uh, because the name was similar so it just came in my mind so finally we have got the last one ball and socket ball and socket and in this ball and socket name itself is telling it is also called as the spheroidal spheroidal spheroid right sphere right big one right that's why classically globular yeah exactly globular head big head right and there is a cup socket so literally shoulder right shoulder joint then hip joint yes all those joints right shoulder joint hip joint so they are all ball and socket right so that's it this is this is what was in our today's thali right because feeling hungry so just as a summary right if we, if we go for it say in the classification right what we did in the classification that was something which was structure based correct then there was it was functional based and then it was like regional right and the number of bones right in functional no movement slight movement and freely movable free moves correct regional it was skull vertebral and and limbs right limbs ha huh. and number of bones say two bones more than two bones <coughs> and the complex one in complex it has to be intra articular disc right so rest is all fine in case of structural we divided into three parts one which was fibrous right and in fibrous there were very interesting sutures right all those suture types then there was syndesmosis right syndesmosis correct so that those joint then later on they 
they get uh, converted and then the gomphosis for the gums gomphosis then this was fibrous then there was cartilaginous right cartilaginous and it was primary and secondary and then finally in the form of synovial and in synovial we were having plain right and then someone with single axis so single axis was what hinge and pivot correct then <coughs> sorry then the dual axis dual axis was as per the shape so condylar and ellipsoid correct and then multiple axis so multi axis multi axis one was saddle right and the ball and socket so this was like the classification so it's almost two hours right and still you guys are there very nice we go for very high speed revision right let's go for very high speed revision let's go let's do it because we have already revised this classification so it will be much easier so let's start joints right <coughs> greek arthros latin articulatio or junctura syndesmology that is the science for joint and ligaments movable or immovable immovable say for example in fontanelles right and red never palpate classification structural as per formation and functional regional as per the number of bones right functional no movement slight movement freely movable regional skull vertebra limbs as per the bones simple is two bones compound is more than two bones and complex intra articular disc right structural fibrous cartilaginous and synovial fibrous that is the joint by fibrous tissue right <coughs> immovable so this is like sutures skull fontanelle syndesmosis that is between two bones and the gomphosis right that is back end socket type of thing sutures in case of sutures this was one plane in which the sutural membrane is straight that is the internasal suture internasal suture in other one they are the serrate serrate means it is notched right and the interparietal suture that is the example also called as the sagittal suture squamous suture very sharif very nice we saw it temporoparietal suture right in which this is at an angle sutural membrane denticulate lambdoid we also saw that that clearly it is a very powerful suture right that is the denticulate so this is when we saw that classification again moving on to the <coughs> cartilaginous in cartilaginous that was the primary primary which is temporary temporary synchondrosis that means these are like high line cartilage and translucent butter paper and then finally converted to synostosis say for example that is the epiphyseal plate or the costochondral junction junction between rib and the and the cartilage and the first chondrosternal chondrosternal between the cartilage and the sternum right that is the what really gets converted about the secondary right they are called as the symphysis right the word is symphysis so when it is symphysis so that is symphysis pubis right manubrio sternal that is between manubrium and sternum and the intervertebral discs these are the examples of symphysis the idea is that they should be giving you the strength right synovial joint right they are one high line cartilage articular cartilage there is no blood supply there is no nerve supply and this synovial fluid that is which gives nutrition and the lubrication right plus there are intra articular disc or meniscus that is we are talking about this intra articular and then there are there are collateral ligaments for the support right this is the joint what we tried to demonstrate yes one interesting thing is this fibrous capsule it has got the stretch receptors right it has got receptor we write like this right receptors stretch receptors so whenever whenever there is undue stress immediately you will get a pain and you will stop unnecessary movement of the joint right so this is as like a protective phenomena 
Synovial membrane is the inner lining of this fibrous capsule and there is hyaluronic acid and which makes it viscous, oil-like, giving lubrication and the nutrition. Synovial joints, one is, so that was the plane, axis in uniaxial, that is one axis, hinge and pivot, biaxial, condylar, ellipsoid, multi and pollen socket, starting with plane and here is our bony Kapoor. Right, so gliding movements at acrovio, ac acromioclavicular, right, between the articulate superior and inferior intervertebral articulation, carpo metacarpal between carpal and metacarpal, that is carpo metacarpal, and the intercarpal sacroiliac, similarly, torso metatarsal and intertarsal, right, plus. Two names, cricothyroid and cricoaretinoid. Right, moving on to single axis, hinge joint, hinge joint that goes for where there is a pulley-like structure, right, for the flexion and extension. One axis, transverse axis. Cervical between C1 and C2, that is what is called as the atlantoaxial joint. And then there is a transverse osseous ligament, and that ligament prevents the slippage of this dense. And this is the joint which is used to say no and that is because it has got one specific point. It is called as pivot, right? Pivot. So that is also called as the trochoid. Radio ulnar joint, superior inferior. That is also meant for it. This is just another point. Biaxial, when we have got two axes, condylar and ellipsoid. Condyles means these are the big, big convex surfaces and the another one concave surfaces for the second bone below. Obviously, both of them, they are rounded, so that's why they are called as the condyle knee joint transverse axis. They give you flexion extension, but because of two axes, they also give partial rotation and in the vertical axis, right? Temporomandibular joint, that is also similar type of joint. Finally, the ellipsoid flexion extension and abduction, abdu adduction in case of fingers, right? Which is occurring between metacarpals and the phalanges. So that's why it is called as the metacarpophalangeal. So when we keep our fingers like this, so this is flexion extension, it is occurring at metacarpophalangeal joint and the abduction adduction. Similarly, the wrist movement. And finally, honorable Pankaj Tripathi, right? Atlantoaxial joint, this, right? And the saddle joint, right? Saddle joint, concavo, convex. Remember the keyword. <coughs> Remember the keyword reciprocal concavo convex. So the shape of one bone and the opposite is just the reverse of it, right? Flexion, extension, and the conjunct rotation. Conjunct rotation, that is the classical word for it. Conjunct means rotation with some other moves, not independent. Adjunct means independent moves. So this occurs at first carpo metacarpal joint, right? This was some music, conjunct and disjunct. The only thing is conjunct is comfortable. I remembered it like that. Conjunct is comfortable. Right? And conjunct is close. Right? Because all those nodes, they are close to each other. This is one scale. This is second scale. This is third scale. So, scales are close. Close to each other. Right? And this one is disjunct. So, in disjunct, they are dur to each other. So, disjunct is difficult to sing. And these scales, they are Door to each, right? Just I won't ask this in exam. Finally, ball and socket, spheroidal, right? In which there is a globular head and the cup and socket, shoulder joint, hip joint, and it goes well. And this was our final classification. So tomorrow we'll be talking about more about functional, regional, and number of bones, plus the clinical aspect, plus the x-rays. Right. All right. So, thank you so much. Right. You guys have got capacity. <laughs> right. Thank you so much. And we meet tomorrow. Thank you and bye bye. I'll put this file into our shared link. Right. Yes, he is important. You should. You should be having it. Thank you everyone and see you. Bye-bye.